At this time uh, each year, we normally have our finance report. Uh, Cecil, our treasurer, comes up and just gives us all the figures, all the numbers. But this year, we were going to do it slightly different, and, and I've been asked to do a wider presentation on the work of Worldwide and the sort of visions that we have. But don't worry, Cecil will be back next year. This is a one-off entirely just for that purpose. And I might also add, he's charged me for using the place. I think a parking space. Anyway, uh, the convention started in 1937, and many of you will have had one of these in your hands this year. This is the program for this year. None of you will have had one of these. This is the program for the 1937 convention. And helpfully on the back, because it was the first convention, they put in the purpose of having a convention, explaining why they'd set the thing up. And a key phrase, you can see just it highlighted there, on the back of this, is that it was to, to inform views as to the progress of Christ's work in other lands and that are essential for our correct relationship with the great missionary enterprise of the gospel. Basically, what they're saying is, unless you're informed, you really can't have a proper relationship with what God is doing around the world. So they saw that the convention role was to inform people, inform believers, just like the folks that are sitting in front of me tonight. But how do you do that in 1937? Well, you could only hire a church or a hall, and you would then bring speakers to that, and you would then invite congregations to come along as well. And that's what they did. They just hired a hall, and there's the folks gathering outside it back in the 1930s, and they invited speakers to come along. So you were getting one place and one group at a time being informed. But as time went on, technology developed, and the convention has adapted and adopted some of these ways of new ways of informing. So you had cassette tapes came along, we had those, we had CDs, they came along, we used those, and these were used to record speakers and then we could dispatch these to, to people who perhaps weren't able to get to Bangor. The arrival of the internet obviously took the process hugely forward. A giant leap and we've been able to create a website which allowed us to do so much more in recent times. So we store our talks there and we leave that for successive events, just piling them up in our, in our library. And I wanted just to illustrate how that has grown and how that has been used. I just begin this idea of informing believers right across around the globe now that we're looking at. So I've checked some statistics. There were approximately 206 countries at the Olympics represented. There were approximately 193 that are associated with the United Nations. So, for the sake of argument, we'll say there's 200 nations in this globe. 200. Fix that number in your mind. And the question that we're posing is, from how many of those countries did our website, and what are you talking about, our Vimeo, which is where we store all our, our uh, archive stuff, material, from how many of those countries did we get contact in 2023, last year? Okay, that's the question. How many of those 200 did we get contact from? So, here we go. How many, I want to get your hands up, how many say we heard from 25? Nobody? How many think we heard from 50? There's one up, good man. How many think we heard from 75 countries? There's a few of our hands going up. hundred. So we're talking about half the world now in terms of countries made contact with us last year. A 
110? <laughs> well, here's the answer. 124. Just reflect on that figure for a moment. That's 60% of the countries on this planet contacted us this last year. Just let that sink in. This organization, 60% of the countries. But anyway, that's, that's just, just to park that in your brain. We've also then tried to extend and are continuing to do that. The, the, the experience of having worldwide, not just in Bangor, but in other places, we've introduced satellites started those in Macrofelt and in Dollingstown, and we've gradually extended those to this year. For the first time, we're having seven in total around the country. And there's the indication of where they are, two down south and uh, five in, in the north. So 1937 program said, we're gonna inform people that they'll know what's going on, that they're better able to be associated with God's work around the world. But it wasn't just for information, for head knowledge. It was actually to stimulate people to do things. And the three key that, uh, pillars that they pulled out, and which we still build on, is for prayer, giving, and going. That's the three pillars. You're informed, not just so you know something, that, that you're informed that you might pray, give, and go. We'll take them in turn. Prayer. The need for the prayer support for the convention has been something that's been taken as a given, really, from earliest days. So with this in mind, immediately after the second convention in September 1938, they started a prayer meeting on a Monday morning. September 1938, each Monday morning, is still going. That's 86 years, in case you didn't do the calculations, come September. So we're gonna mark that at the beginning of when we start again in September. So that, that's 86 years later, and it's a testimony to God's goodness and the faithfulness of those who are involved. But realizing that only a few uh, can actually be in Bangor physically on a Monday morning, we've thought about other ways of getting prayer support out so we've created a monthly prayer update. This is available to anybody who has an email address because it comes straight to your email near your inbox. And we have about 350 people built up to being supporting us in that way, taking the, the monthly update. We'd love that to be 10 times that number. So if you're not doing it, do think about it. So that's prayer. Giving is the second one. We've been richly blessed, really, from, from day one with the giving of God's people uh, to the convention. Um, it's a sign of, his, of God's goodness to us. In, t in terms of cash, it's about six million that's been raised over the, uh, the period of the, the convention, the 88 years that we're running. But if you convert that to today's values, it's about 14 million that's been raised. That's the end of the good news. The problem at the moment is that our regular donations, if you take out legacies, which are just unpredictable and they come and we're grateful to have them, but you can't really build your budget around them. If you take out le legacies, then our giving is going down. So if you look at the actual amounts, you'll see the graphic there. It looks like the arrow is horizontal. But if you convert the amounts into today's value, the graph changes. We're going down. So obviously uh, that's something that we want to address, but in parallel with that, which makes it even more complicated, the expenses, and we all know this one, are going up. So in this whole area of giving, what are we gonna do about this? And we've tried a number of things and we are continuing to work at it. Obviously, we've prayed through what is the possibilities here. So we have the, the traditional way of giving, which is through the envelope and putting it into the plate, and you'll be able to do that later on uh, in the service. 
But we also now have a, have a whole range of other ways. You can be standing orders, or you can use our fancy tap and go uh, machine that's sitting in the foyer for those that only come with cards. So under giving, the plea is to help us reverse the adverse trends that we're facing. One way of doing it, in a very solid way, and a number if you have, is to become a friend of Worldwide. This is just basically signing a standing order and supporting us throughout the year. The third way we're looking at then, so we've done the prayer, we've done the giving and the going. The going one is one that's been close to our hearts, but yet is one that we are so sensitive about because we realize, fully appreciate, that this is only the activity of the Holy Spirit that can make this people change. And we really do be careful about that. So we, we, we do not want anybody going who does not feel a particular call, but certainly if they feel the call, we want to be encouraged in a minute. What we do in terms of the uh, convention is that we present the opportunities, the possibilities, the alternate options for people, and then hopefully God takes it on from that. We rejoice that through the, out the whole period of the convention, right from almost day one, we've seen many, many people come through to a new change in their lives, taking a new career path because they were at the convention. That's just a, a sample of the many, many people who actually have been changed by at this convention. I'm going to show a short clip now, which describes one person's story. This is Melvin's story. So my name's Melvin Kelly, and I'm from Ochnachloe, married to Sharon, and now living in Ballymena. We have four children, Joshua, Abigail, Noah, and Lydia. As a family, we've been involved in ministry in Southeast Africa in the country of Mozambique with One Mission Society from 2010 through 2021. We thought we were just home on, on that homeland assignment, preparing to return to Mozambique. But during that year, our son Joshua was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. So he was hospitalized, and that was a really trying time with him being in hospital for six months. We really felt carried, and we were very much carried by the prayers of God's people through that time. And we rejoice. Joshua has been healed of cancer. You know, he had to have a bone marrow transplant and is doing tremendously well. And in the middle of that then, our mission organization invited me to apply for the role that I'm now currently doing as a UK director for One Mission Society. I became a Christian at 11. Then when I went to university, it was a time of spiritual growth for me, especially getting involved with the Christian Union. It was as a student that I heard and felt God's call to be available to whatever he would want me to do in my life. But when I finished my studies, I was offered a job and prayed about that and started working for a construction company. And as I got used to that role in the work context, I knew that the Lord was calling me to tithe, to support missionaries and ministries. But also I, I always kept coming back to Lord, you asked me to be available. Where might you be leading, leading me? And I was working in a construction project in Luton Airport. I felt God's prompting again. And I came home for the weekend and there was a flyer through the door from the Worldwide Missionary Convention. And I knew when that flyer was through the post box that God was saying into my heart, you say you're available. Why don't you make a plan to go back to Worldwide? and so came to Worldwide in August 2002 and afterwards went to the Global Village and I went round a number of the stalls and I was really pursuing and seeking, Lord, is there somewhere you want me to be? And there were so many opportunities to go to this country and that country. But before I left that night, I stopped at the, the One Mission Society stall. One of the things that I had been praying about was, Lord, if you want me to be involved using my construction background in a missionary context. Let there be a missionary somewhere. Let there be a mission organization praying right now for someone to come forward to help with a specific need. And when I was speaking to the rep, Stephen Williamson, that night, he had said to me, not knowing my prayer, had said to me, there has been the missionaries in Mozambique 
And many supporters within OMS have been praying for over a year for someone to come forward to help with construction. And that was a very definite link. It was a divine appointment here at Worldwide Missionary Convention. The Worldwide Missionary Convention has provided a place to come as a family when we come in Homeland Assignments and it's always been a place for encouragement and that has meant so much as a missionary. But I've also found it to be a great place to help encourage church leaders and, and just church members in general to, to learn more about our world and to consider how they individually and collectively as churches can engage in, in, in the Great Commission and engage in the great commandment to love our neighbour as ourselves. And so I would really encourage churches, Christians, to be part of the Worldwide Missionary Convention family. To facilitate people who are maybe thinking about going abroad, we have introduced this year a Go Worldwide bursary scheme. This is to give some financial support for those that are, say, seriously considering missionary work. It's a scheme that we want to be, as many as possible, to be a plan for. So if you know of anybody uh, who is interested in this end of things, then do make them aware of that particular scheme. So that's what we're doing as a convention. Those are the areas that we see as important, but we do need everybody contributing, and that's why we're asking you tonight, you're here, to be open to what God might be saying to you, even in a small way, to making a contribution to the work. So, as we said before, as Peter said, we're changing lives, not just across the world. We're hoping to change them here as well. Thank you. <laughs>